take it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Facebook Live. It is, the date is uh, Wednesday, November 29, 2017, at 3.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to thank you for tuning in today. We have a very, very exciting program about asset protection uh, today with, with uh, Beacon CEO Mark Germain, who's going to talk to us in a minute. But you know the drill here. I have to just read a little disclosure item. I'll make it super, super quick for you. Uh, please remember that this broadcast is giving an opinion and not like it advice. So anything, uh, you must put your pers uh, personal situation in perspective and all performance numbers are historic. Please talk to an investment professional with your own situation and someone that understands your goals and your objectives. Thank you very much for that. So today I'm going to interview Mark Germain. He is the CEO and founder of Beacon Wealth Management. Mark is going to talk to us today about the five, one, two, three, four, five important takeaways from Beacon's recent asset protection for healthcare professional seminar. So with that, how are you, Mark? I'm doing great today. I'm gonna have five. Five, <laughs> okay. So now before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about, number one, what is asset protection? And number two, for those of us who couldn't make the event, tell us a little bit about the program. Sure, I think what's really important is for people to realize that asset protection is not some esoteric concept or offshore protection strategy. It's really about protecting whatever you have built, whatever assets you have from the claims of creditor, disgruntled business partners, disgruntled family members, divorcees, etc. So all of this comes into play in asset protection, which now creates a much wider audience of people that must be concerned about asset protection. So if I'm hearing you correctly, there's a wider audience. Typically, when we think of asset protection, we're thinking of the ultra and the very wealthy. Um, so are you kind of hearing from you uh, that it's maybe... It's much, much different. It, it's really, really, Tina, it's really everyone. And if you have a house, if you have kids, if you have things that you're building in investment accounts, etc., those are all your assets. Those are things that need to be protected. And some of the strategies are extremely simple to take care of that. Okay, great. So are you going to talk to us a, a little bit about that today? You want me facing you? Uh, you can, you can face whatever. <laughs> I want you to, we're having a conversation yeah. and we've got a great group of people who okay. are watching it. Okay, fantastic. So why don't you give us the first uh, takeaway? Well, I think the very first takeaway is just what I just started to say. Yep. Yeah, asset protection is for everyone. So it's so for, for everyone. It's not a province of just the wealthy. If you if you have a home, an auto, you have a spouse, you need some asset protection, there are strategies to do it. House, house is easy, okay? Too often people have the house owned in the wrong situation. If you're married, tenants by the entirety is one of the most important concepts that we introduce to everyone at the conference not switching it to your spouse's name because you're a medical professional, so you want to make sure that your uh, professional liability protection is by changing the owner of the assets. Tenants of the entirety, it can never be taken under any claim. Okay, so let's also to, let's back up because I don't believe that we, uh, we shared what the definition of asset protection really means. So we, we talked did. about we, the, we the, did say is there asked, a formal definition for yeah, it? Which is what I gave, which is protecting yourself, protecting your assets from creditors. It's probably exactly. the easiest, simplest way to say it. Okay, and the first tip that you gave us is that it's for, for everyone, and then you're gonna go on and tell us our, our second tip. Yeah, second tip, and I think it was one of the ones that we really brought out in, in the workshop for everyone. I mean, we, we held a workshop, about 50 people, 50 professionals, and it was very, very well received. And the first thing that we explained is asset protection is not a substitute for insurance. Insurance protects against unforeseen contingencies. You still need insurance. And in many cases, insurance is the total asset protection. So I want to go back to the situation that you just talked about of the, um, uh, the, the couple with the house. Um, if you own a house, you have some form of coverage. So are you implying that the umbrella 
um, uh, in, in that policy is not adequate enough. So insurance is not an adequate measure for asset protection. It's part of the strategy. Insurance is part of the strategy. So we're going to talk a little bit about where you own assets in, in a few minutes, but insurance is the number one component. As a matter of fact, it was interesting is the uh, person that spoke on insurance, Rocco Esposito, uh, really educated the audience to understand that medical professionals' biggest liability claims are not on malpractice. They're on auto insurance. Whoa. So not having adequate auto insurance, and you mentioned a word, the umbrella, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is an umbrella policy, which is a relatively inexpensive, high dollar denominated coverage. So you can provide a couple million dollars of additional protection over your automobile policy at, rel at cents on the dollar. Okay. And that becomes a really important component and you brought that up. So if the biggest potential claim is in your auto policies, and that if you have the right limits, you can almost always settle within your limits, then getting in touch with your insurance agent and making sure that you're adequately covered is one of the first steps to asset protection. And they should probably have a talk with their financial advisor as well too, because a lot of those policies are very, it's, it's hard to read, they're hard to understand and interpret exactly the kind of coverage that one has, right? Well, we're kind of biased that we, and uh, we are very subjective. We think everyone should be contacting their financial advisor on all of these topics for sure. Okay. But whoever is part of your team, mm -hmm. that's really the most important thing, that you look at your team and make sure you say, I really need to protect myself. I have kids that are coming up to driving age and they're going to have an accident. And the most important thing is to protect against that. Okay, so uh, number one, number two, now uh, we're on number three. Uh, it's important to start early. And you want to make sure you start before there's any potential claim. We had a client call us and they said, oh, I need to move everything here because my son had a boating accident. Well, it's a day too late. So you cannot protect assets that you have today from something that happened two minutes ago. It must be that you do the protection in advance. So get started early. The plan can always be changed. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not the absolute solution. You can change your asset protection plans as you move forward. So just to reiterate again, what you said is the need to really start early. You can't react, God forbid, that there is some sort of accident or something that happens in your family you can all of a sudden decide that you want to begin an asset protection strategy right after that. It has to actually be before the event. Right. Okay. You, can, you can implement asset protection strategies with the caveat that whatever happened the day before, all of the assets that you had the day before were not protected. Great. So putting them in will protect against something happening tomorrow, but it's not going to protect against anything that happened yesterday. Okay. So what's number four? Number four is to recognize that assets fall into two categories, your personal assets in one bucket and then your business assets in another bucket. And each needs to be in separate vehicles in order to protect them. And so I think also too that this kind of segues into the prior strategy that you talked about, things being set up because um, along with the personal assets and the business assets, are the use of different types of trust vehicles. And those trusts need to be set up in advance, correct? Trust vehicles, other entities. So think corporations, mm -hmm. LLCs, partnerships, et cetera, and utilizing these vehicles. Business assets belong in one en entity, personal assets belong in another. Very common for personal assets to be in trusts. Very common for business assets to be in LLCs. So, so um, I know that this uh, seminar dealt with uh, uh, a lot of healthcare professionals. Can you kind of give us um, an example of what most doctors are doing as it relates to personal and business assets? Just kind of uh, give an example. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really a good question because we find that many medical professionals uh, talk, to, talk to their friends and what they do is they move all of their assets to their spouse. And by moving it to their spouse, they think that they're protecting themselves from liability when in actuality, they're centering all of the assets can all be captured outside. 
because most of the claims are going to be on things other than malpractice. So they may protect the assets from a malpractice claim, but they're not protecting them from any other claim. So also, most doctors' medical business, all right, because we need to recognize that although they are serving the goods of the good of clients and patients and everything else, they still have a business. And that business, in most cases, in, is inside a professional corporation, a professional LP, et cetera. And by providing insurances and by documents inside of those entities, you can protect the assets of the entity itself. When we look at the personal, the trusts may serve that role of protecting the assets from garnishment. Again, I know it can get very complicated, and the most important thing is that the, the, the use of trusts are, are predicated around that doctor and what uh, his or her uh, position is and how that arrangement is. So and, again, it goes back to talking to, to your financial advisor and somebody who really knows your situation in order to structure the right vehicles around the, the asset protection strategy. And make sure you don't forget about assets. Okay. So oftentimes people right. forget, oh, I've got a lake house, or I've got a vacation home, or I have uh, a, an automobile or antiques or items that are or relative jet ski. <laughs> or jet skis, yeah. So um, one of the things to understand, and it's kind of moving on to to point five. Mm -hmm. Jeff Callahan, the CPA uh, attorney, showed us how your investments and your saving vehicle may actually protect assets. As a matter of fact, one of the big things that he brought up were pension plans are most likely never attachable by creditors or by any type of claimant. So by making sure that you maximize where your assets are in your investment accounts properly structured may actually be able to save. He actually brought up one of the things that we have been talking about for the last few years is 529 plans, which are very tax efficient, also provide an asset protection because they are now out of the estate. And of so the people I think, that create them. And I, I think also, too, we're throwing a lot of, uh, of, of terms around. A 529 is a college savings uh, plan. That's correct. Okay, right. Yeah. And if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, actually the latest blog post um, written by uh, Dr. Norman Sohn, um, financial uh, em emeritus, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wrote an article on 529. So if you want to learn about 529, head over to the Beacon blog and, and read the article that's, right there. That's great. The other, and then the other thing that, uh, that uh, Jeffrey spent a fair amount of time on is investment real estate. Because as you, uh, as you move up the line, you tend to, uh, when you buy property, oftentimes they're an investment. And properly structured in an LLC can protect you from personal liability as well as business liability. And I think one of the other important takeaways that I that 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 um, uh, the participants uh, received, the guests received from this seminar, yeah. is understanding that a proper asset protection strategy really involves the con configuration of a lot of different types of specialists. You've got a financial planner, you've got an attorney, you've got an insurance specialist. Uh, and you've got everybody that uh, is related to the, um, the it, family. It's, it's important to bring the pieces together because you're not, one person is not going to be able to absolutely analyze the best insurance contract mm -hmm. for the property and casually understand all of the tax rules, be able to draft the documents. So attorneys must draft documents in order to, to uh, put things into trust or to put things into LLCs. And I think the... The, the biggest takeaway, and, and you're kind of headed down that path, Tina, is there is no single plan that works for everyone. So we can't sit here and say, you need this trust, this LLC, and this investment account. That's going to solve all your problems. It doesn't. Proper planning with someone that, as Tina said, understands A, your situation, and B, understands asset protection and what are the tools to get there. So if uh, someone listening right now has a question about asset protection, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Probably the best thing is to uh, make it, get on our website and submit a question directly through our website. Okay, so if you have a question, uh, please submit it through Beacon's website and, um, and keep on tuning into these types of broadcasts. Uh, are you planning another event for the spring? 
Uh, well, you kind of know the answer to that one. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> really glad you brought that up. One of the things that, that happened during the evening is, and Jeff Callahan was instrumental in, in bringing up, it just so happened that the day that we did the asset protection workshop, the House passed the new tax bill. And Jeffrey was ready with all of the potential changes and how they would affect us, A, as investors, B, as being in New Jersey or states that surround us, and what was the impact going to be? So what we decided on the spot was that our next seminar was going to be on what tax law is ultimately passed and changed, and how that is going to affect us in 2017, 18, and going forward. So that absolutely will be the next workshop, which is the new tax law changes. So you hear it, heard it here first, everyone. Uh, tax reform is coming up in 2018. Yeah. It'll be uh, Beacon's next event. We want to thank you all for tuning in. And if you have any questions, uh, just please feel free to reach out. Our number here also is 201-447-9500. I hope everyone has a great day. Have a wonderful holiday, and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.